Hello everybody, I'm Anthological. This is Creationist of the Week. That time of the week where we remember that some people believe that the Earth has been around for less than a million for the time that physical evidence shows that it has been around. <laughs> As we all know, the idea that we should test our theories with physical evidence and our observations is called empiricism. But this man has it figured all out. He calls himself true empiricism, as if the empiricism you were already using is false. True empiricism isn't all that popular, but he's one of G-Man's friends, so we've been seeing him around more and more. So I decided to check out his channel, and I found this little gem. 100% evidence for creator. Got defied by atheist scientists in denial of scientific observable facts. Sounds very informative, right? We really need that 100% evidence for creator. So let's check out this 100%. All right, guys, I'm about to show you some more intellectual dishonesty from scientists and how they continuously and repetitively keep on insulting the intelligence of individuals that listen to them, uh, thinking that they're going to get away with it. Whoa, steady, Tiger. Now, true empiricism says scientists are insulting our intelligence and think they're going to get away with it. I'm interested already. Some of my biggest heroes are scientists. Carl Sagan. The cosmos. Is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. Neil deGrasse Tyson. David Attenborough. Ooh. If these guys have been insulting my intelligence, it's a good thing true empiricism smart even though I'm dumb. It's a good thing true empiricism is doing science the right way and is answering the real questions, like, can someone live to be a thousand years old? It's an ambiguous issue that true empiricism is going to settle. But first, he's going to show all those fake scientists for who they really are. Go ahead, sir! Then there are the motor proteins, haulage workers, that use the cell skeleton as highways to deliver food, chemicals, and the essential building materials of life to wherever they are needed. They are just one of the astonishing micro-machines that keep this bustling community healthy. Scientists are asked all the time, how do things in a cell know how to get where they're supposed to go to do their job? And for sure, cells are very chaotic and things are bumping into each other and most of that's just random. But enough things get where they're supposed to go that the entire system works. Right before this chick just made the statement that what is going on inside of the cell is just random and enough things just happen to be bumping into each other and trying to, an idea basically, an enforcement of her reductionist evolutionary type of belief to where everything is random and non so, Sorry, T. Can, can I call it? No, no, no. Um, never mind. I just need you to slow down. I, I mean, I know it's not, it's hard not to get carried away when you're smart like you are. I get carried away sometimes too. Yeah, but just for us plebs. Uh, so right before she made that statement in her evolutionist way, what happened? Belief to where everything is random and non-intended in a gradual developmental way, basically, and an enforcement in a very subtle way, trying to uh, insult the intelligence of people, while right before this statement that she had made, they were showing specific operations inside of the cell that had specific purposes uh, working together with other operations together in a coordinated way. Okay, so as he said, they showed molecular machines with a specific purpose. That's true. But when you consider what that chick goes on to say, she tries to account for all moving proteins in the cell. And she's actually right. Uh, intelligently designed or not, it's a recurring fact in cell biology that things just float and fly around the cell and can easily miss 
but enough do get through, thanks to chemistry. This is just poor writing on the part of the filmmakers. They've interviewed her, asked her some general questions, and tried to place her answers with more specific things. Uh, I genuinely believe it's not her fault. But do, do go on, T.E. Um, you have that 100% 100 evidence, evidence for Krieger. God defied by atheist scientists in denial of scientific observable facts. And one small misunderstanding shouldn't stop that, should it? Well, let's just ignore that. If, if most of what's going on inside of the cell, the billion pieces of biological machinery inside of the cell, are just random and just be happening to be working together, what about DNA transcription, a very easy one, trans uh, with the transcription initiation complex and how it's an operation with activated proteins that bind the specific sequences of DNA known as enhancer regions? What about the uh, the manipulation of adenosine triphosphate and how that works together with in, in the manipulation of uh, cell signaling? What about the of, of variety of other bio biological machinery working together inside of the cell with all of these different bio 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 biological machinery working together. I mean, you're supposed to expect us to believe this statement when the data is defying that. Molecular machines, DNA transcription, almost everything in the cell works by simple chemical attractions or other kinds of interactions that are reducibly complex as far as we can see. But again, this is a cheap shot against the poor editing. Uh, if they asked her about molecular machines, she would have talked about them specifically. You would have gotten a better answer. But they just asked her how things know where to go. The fact is that they don't. They just fly around and the laws of chemistry will fix everything. Uh, and and that's, that's what we observe. Whether, whether or not evolution is true, e even, e even Ken Ham will look in a cell and he'll say that she's right. That's what's going on. Uh, unless he's crazy enough to say God is magically positioning everything. But yeah, it, uh, create the, the creationist scientific viewpoint will confirm this as well. It's not just the evolutionists. It, it's, it's what... Like the freaking Helia case, looping and spinning and copying and cutting specific segments, uh, not only for, not only forwards but backwards also. This, this is just a freaking accident. That that's just a random, accidental, non-intended happening with no specific purposes or coordinated operation. Again, it's a reducibly complex system favored by evolution that works on a very established chemistry. It has a purpose, it has a use, it's very good at what it does, but that doesn't say anything against its origin. Uh, ideas of studying the world and seeing complexity, uh, we get these uh, outmoded ideas of design. There is an appearance of design, but in fact things are not designed. They, they look like they're designed, but they're, they're not actually. Right, so these things look like a duck, quack like a duck, and talk like a duck, and in every single conceivable way they seem to be a duck, yet in the exact same sentence they're actually a cow. This is Robo Reptile. He is as much a reptilian life form as living organisms are designed. Living things do appear designed, but on closer inspection we find that there's a natural purification mechanism that optimizes them for their environment. Of course, it looks like a design, but it's really an unconscious evolutionary system. And likewise, in every single conceivable way, these things have an appearance of design, they have the attributes of design, and bear the measurement of causality to where certain attributes have been known to come from the results of intelligent creators. Yet, because you view religion as a primitive way of thinking, and you understand that these things are religious friendly, you deny the premises that lead up to this conclusion and drop a gate right between the middle of them. And while deliberately refusing to be open-minded and looking at these things for what they actually are, and from what you acknowledge, from what you see, from what they... I, I have to stop T there. His sentence goes even longer to the point, yeah, he, he doesn't take a breath. I, I can't believe it. I'll link the video so you can go and watch it for yourself. <clears throat> but his sentence goes even longer to the point where, where um, he makes, you know, two more arguments before stopping. So I don't know. I'm not going to bother that. I'm just going to stop him right now. So T 
scientists don't reject religion outright and then try to aim away for, from that with their biases. They go with the they go with the evidence leads and they come to their own personal religious conclusions. That it's their business. They don't. They're not there to destroy religion, and they're not like creationists, creation scientists, where they try to force confirm religion every way possible. It's it. No real scientist does it either way. If you're doing science to confirm atheism or confirm evolution, you're doing it wrong. If you're in science to um, find more about something or disprove something or be the next mutant or something, that's the good way to do science. Because then you're not assuming, oh, I'm going to win, I'm going to do something. Uh, you're, you're, you're realizing that science can go anywhere. Um, religion is an important science, and uh, is a big shot with 100% evidence for Krieger. You should know that. They are and enforce a reductionist, a reductionist evolutionary way of thinking to where these things were the result of a non-intended gradual developmental happening which you have absolutely no evidence of, uh, to support or about or what is supported like these prebiotic soups consisting of fruit floating nucleotides or these amino acids being produced inside of the, uh, the uh, or these uh, nucleotides being uh, manufactured inside of the laboratory is all subjectively determined and based on conjecture. This is not science that these people are presenting. This is a very one-sided, narrow view which, with a deliberate refusal to look at things for what they actually are. There is evidence for evolution. We've observed it. Uh, to, in Lenski's laboratory, on the Galapagos Islands, in the Entertina salamanders, there's obvious evidence in embryology in the fossil record. Evolution is a fact. Creationism is the fraud. Again, evolution and contemporary cell biology are not refusals to accept what's there. There are our best efforts to understand life on its most fundamental levels. And if anything, it's people like true empiricism who are really undermining that. And I find it disgusting that people can claim that they have 100% evidence for Krieger. When all they really have is an argument from personal incredulity and an easy cheap shot on a random documentary made to educate the public. <clears throat> Especially when they don't even pay for their video software that they choose to represent said arguments with. That's why True Empiricism is this week's Creationist of the Week. Like the freaking Helia case.